So that is the starting and we're moving on to the next uh, session that we have for you. Up next, we have an accomplished global media leader who has been responsible for both the growth of the client's businesses as well as the growth of the agency in the APAC region. We are pleased to welcome our keynote speaker, Gordon Domlija, CEO, APAC Wave Maker, who shares his insights on building brands that truly matter. Gordon is joining us from Beijing, and I'll hand it over to Gordon. Gordon, thank you so much for joining in. The screen is all yours. Thank you so much. Um, I am actually in Shanghai, um, and but yeah, it's it's close enough. <laughs> it's still an external perspective. Um, right, uh, let me <laughs> please try and share my uh, screen. Okay, how are we doing? Is that visible? Absolutely. Okay, there should be a heading that says building brands that matter, how we positively provoke growth for our clients. Okay. Uh, so firstly, uh, thank you very much, uh, Exchange for Media, uh, for the invitation. It's an absolute honor to be here. Um, and I'm delighted to be able to share with you um, today um, an external perspective from outside of India on brands that matter. Uh, I'm Gordon Domlija. I am the CEO of Wavemaker Asia Pacific. Okay, we'll jump straight into it. I've, um, you know, there's, there's a few slides, a couple of videos, which I wanted to share. So it's a bit of a step change from the fireside chat. Uh, but hopefully there'll be enough time for like questions and, and, and debate afterwards. So we've seen an explosion in purpose-driven marketing. Now, this has undoubtedly happened across the world, but undoubtedly accelerated by the COVID pandemic. Um, nowhere have we seen this like more prevalently than in India, which continues to be the home of storytelling in advertising and also in emotional connection in advertising. So today I'm gonna to talk about why purpose is now table stakes. It's your entry point into building brands. How brands that matter deliver growth, what communication can do to enhance purpose for brands. And I'm also gonna land on a positive provocation to make meaningful innovation a core tactic of purpose-driven advertising. Okay, I'm gonna to have to do that manually, Never mind. Um, okay. So uh, throughout the pandemic, uh, consumer confidence has been eroded. Uh, the Reserve Bank of India Consumer Confidence Index has actually dropped to 48.5 in May this year. That's the lowest ever on record. At the same time, digital transformation has accelerated for marketers and for brands. And of course, for agencies <laughs> who bear a lot of the brunt of like driving that transformation. Um, so we're all striving to deliver deliver daily targets while trying to overhaul legacy business operations and models and, and, and routes to market, and also create sustainable, relevant purpose. At Wavemaker, we believe there is always a better way to grow. And our mission is to help our clients find it in good times and indeed in challenging times. The way we do this is through positive provocation. So what that means is we uncover knowledge, we uncover insights, we uncover um, data that helps us challenge status quo unlock new ways to grow. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is you share with you some of our positive provocations uh, for brands that matter, you know, those trying to find their purpose. Firstly, let's define what makes a brand matter. Um, you know, brands like, I mean, firstly for me, you know, and again, this is, this is my personal take on like, you know, what, what I've seen in my experience. Um, the brand communication is aligned to core values, core values of that brand. Brand taps into a universal human insight or a universal value. And thirdly, like the message has some sort of societal value. So while functional benefits may still be communicated, uh, the brand goes beyond these, uh, centers on a message that is relevant and distinctive to their purpose. Um, it's a really interesting quote, which I really like, which I'm gonna share with you, which is um, from um, BlackRock Investment Management CEO, Larry Friend. It goes, the public expectations of your company have never been greater. Every company must not only deliver financial performance, but also show how it makes a positive contribution to society. Without a sense of purpose, no company, either public or private, can achieve its full potential. Which I think is like an incredible statement, you know, especially for an investment management firm. You know. But I think it also points to the reality of, um, of what brands now stand for. For instance, like, you know, brands have become duty bound to fulfill probably this void in society left by governments and administrations. Uh, 
It's telling the people now believe uh, that they feel they have more control over brands than they do about governments. They can shape the purpose of brands. They can shape the direction of brands and what they stand for much more so than they can do about uh, the political parties that are supposed to represent them. At Wavemaker, we are incredibly proud uh, to work with brands that, that matter. Uh, um, we work with many companies who are building brands through purpose-driven advertising. There's just a couple of, like, few examples here, a couple from outside of, um, of India and one very specific India example. But Huawei, I think, you know, um, everyone knows for certain reasons. However, you know, what, what we did with them, like, you know, they, uh, this, this is a really interesting, interesting case. They, they developed a, um, an app called StorySign. What this app does is essentially it turns children's books, written children's books, into sign language. They didn't produce this app for any like financial purpose, for any revenue purpose. They produced it because genuinely it helps them and it helps millions of families around the world to help their children uh, learn, educate, read, learn phonics and learn and understand how, um, you know, and to share experiences which were previously beyond their, their ability to share. Now, so what we did with them is help them really distribute this to hundreds of thousands of families, you know, genuinely changing lives with this app. And again, not driven by profit, not driven by any revenue stream, but driven by purpose. You know, they have created something that needs to be shared. DoorDash is an interesting example in, in the US. It's, it's a company built by immigrants really tapping into like the diverse food cultures that we find in, uh, in really big cities, particularly in the US, but now uh, across the world, we're seeing, we're, we're seeing them grow. So what we did with them is um, it shift what was a very focused acquisition investment budget. You know? Just about getting acquisition, always like, you know, trying to build performance, uh, drive sales. And what we've done is shift a huge chunk of their advertising uh, and, and, and their investment into, into brand campaigns, you know, which particularly hit during like uh, during the COVID pandemic, you know, running a campaign for them, which was open for delivery. You know, when everything else was shut down, here's how we connect people to the food they love, to the restaurants they love, to the, uh, to the cuisines and the tastes and flavors. So they still feel part of community. Now this not only increased uh, the market share, but it made uh, DoorDash one of the top five fastest growing brands in the US in 2020. Here in India, you, you probably all know, we partnered with Mondelez, building authentic campaigns for their brands. Our thank you campaign here, which is, which is featured, uh, for Cadbury's it was a real rallying cry, prompting people to share their thanks when interacting with merchants, with like um, social service industry workers. So looking at these examples and, and the rest of the experience we have across like, you know, vast swathe of, uh, of global and, and, and local brands, we believe having purpose is becoming table stakes. As I said, this is like your base level entry point into the game. Um, it's now a core pillar of building and growing a brand. However, this brings with it uh, a need to understand how to execute, how to grow. Now, and this becomes even more important you know, in the delivery of it. So to understand how brands of battle work, we unpick you know, the things that are inside like you know, this storytelling. So let's start with meaning. Purpose provides a differentiation and meaning that brands seek with their consumers, with the people who buy their products, but also with the brand's mission. And then if you move to connection, it's much, e much easier to create a relevant connection with people when you talk about a topic that really matters to them. A recent Accenture study found that 81% of Indians surveyed want companies to take a stand on social, cultural, environmental, and social political issues close to their hearts. Now, this is way ahead of like, most other markets in terms of the need for people to see brands behave in a certain way. And it really puts India at the forefront of working in, 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 in the world of brands that matter. Third part, this delivers growth. Um, brands that over invest in, in brand grow. You know, we've seen this with our um, earlier example on, on DoorDash. You know, a performance business which moved into brand advertising with purpose, you know, accelerating their growth and driving, uh, and, and driving market share and, and driving revenue for their business. Kantar research shows that brands recognized for higher commitment to purpose have grown at twice the rate of others. Now, you know, there are multiple examples, many examples across multiple different categories. You know, look at Nike, look at Google, look at GE. If you look at the data that um, Unilever shared in 2019, it shows their brands with purpose. So these are the ones that are built around sustainable living, grew up more than 50% faster than the rest of their portfolio. So we can see that 
developing a purpose-led brand does drive growth if you can connect people with a deeper meaning. So I'm going to take my jacket off right at this second because it's 38 degrees outside and unfortunately the air conditioning in this room thinks it's still winter. So just bear with me a second. <laughs> right. At Wavemaker, we create communication strategies for brands that matter by focusing on three things. Firstly, insights. So how do we connect purpose with audience? Secondly, imagination or maybe innovation, thinking differently about our understanding of what purchase behavior is. What is the disruptor in the purchase behavior and the purchase journey of people in category in brand? Finally, ideas, the power of ideas to bring brands meaning to life. I'm now gonna show you two ideas from our brilliant team in India that do just that. India is home to more than six crore small businesses and they've been fighting for survival after the coronavirus outbreak and the lockdowns. Presenting not just a Cadbury ad. We advertised not just for ourselves, but for thousands of small businesses across India. The idea was innovative, but the technology and execution was challenging. Most of the stores in India don't have a digital presence. So we had to manually feed our system to create a database of local retailers, mapping them to their location, which we identified through pin codes. As the ad was served to an individual, an algorithm grow located the pin code and then mapped the various local stores in that pin code and served the one closest to the individual in real time. The AI-enabled system created thousands of permutations for the localized version of the same ad, so many that it is even impossible to track. This resulted in the first ever hyper-personalized ad ever that saw the ad supported a local store. The campaign was truly appreciated across India as it was picked up by major influencers. The campaign was a success even on the dark social as it appeared on countless WhatsApp groups across the country. It was also covered by national and international press generating free PR for the campaign and it also organically trended on Twitter. When all of us support our local stores, all of us can have a happy Diwali, not just a Cadbury ad. So in that first example of Cadbury's, you see uh, the connection created out of an immediate and universal societal issue. Um, what I'm gonna show you in the second example is, is one of the most memorable and lasting um, examples of uh, activations by Tata Tea under the Jago um, umbrella. Uh, Power of 49 set out to change the patriarchal way women voted by empowering them to make informed and independent choice during the 2014 elections. There's a really nice film here to, to demonstrate how that worked. India is no place for women. We cannot tolerate this kind of uh, incidence of crime. Just look at the life cycle of a woman in India. The female feticide numbers India has ranks amongst the highest in the world. Problem is, does the political class of our country care? The political class had to take action. We decided to strike at the roots. The Indian general elections. Politicians have forgotten the 49% of the voter base that is female. We launched the Power of 49 with the ambition of getting 100 million women of India to cast an informed vote. But how? For the campaign to be successful, we had to target two classes of women voters. Research showed us that Indian television had a major role in shaping society. Indian women consider real-life women protagonists on TV as their alter egos and emulate them. We brought together the largest television networks of India on one platform to mobilize this cause. 
we identified TV soap stars as key influencers for the women of Bharat and news anchors and social commentators as influencers of women of India. Women are 49% of the voting population in this country with the power to make or break the government. The power of 49. When women vote, women win. Using the power of television, we integrated empowerment stories into India's most popular soaps. This inspired women to table their issues. And drove a critical political debate in news with women issues experts. The campaign also received unprecedented support from high-profile Bollywood stars. We brought 1.2 million real women together to build the world's first ever crowdsourced political manifesto. Given by you, the Indian woman, we now have a women's manifesto, which we are presenting to political parties across the country. We presented this manifesto to some of India's most influential politicians. But we didn't stop there. We gave the women one final push to make their journey up till the ballot box. Every woman needs to go out and vote. If you don't vote, you don't have the right to complain. So for all the women out there, empower yourself for them. The results were staggering. Media campaign power of 49 ke tahat, 49 percent hissa kinka. See, Mahila, ya D Purush. I mean, it's incredibly inspiring and, and humbling to see. Let's not play it quite yet. It's incredibly uh, <laughs> inspiring and humbling uh, to see what impact advertising media can actually make when working with a brand with, with purpose, you know, that aligns it so closely to its own values and its own, um, and, and, and its own way of thinking and its own way of, 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 of being. Um, so we've talked quite a bit about what works. Um, what doesn't? What are the sort of potential pitfalls that we see? Uh, uh, this is a really interesting visual. So like most people you know, around the world are, are fully aware of um, the Dove campaign for real beauty, you know, um, and you know it's been hugely successful, like you know particularly in the UK, but across the world. Um, but you know even a, a brand that's done so well in driving you know their agenda and their purpose uh, can make massive missteps, make huge mistakes. So taking their campaign for real beauty into packaging of all shapes and sizes, I mean this completely offended so many of the people they've worked so many so hard over so many years to actually influence and win over. Now, what that shows us that actually is, is much harder to get this kind of purpose-driven advertising to work. Functional advertising, which is you know, traditional and very well codified, is so much more easy and so much easier to get right. You know, another hot example is um, you know, very um, uh, close to all in India, is around Tide for Time, focusing on the challenge modern parents have in finding quality family time. You know, if you look at some of the consumer response to this, it's been that you know, the execution and the delivery has been preachy, that it's been lacking in insight or that there's no tangible action or benefit. You know, when this happens, and it happens often, you know, it can actually push brands the other way. I think it's quite interesting as well, like you know, looking at uh, what happened in Cannes quite recently. I mean, obviously, you know, the, the pandemic and everything that's happened has, has created a lot of purpose-driven advertising. But you know, you see many observers and jurors coming out saying that you know, actually, you know, there's been a bit of a purpose parade you know, of very worthy brands all trying to jump on a bandwagon without creating any sort of distinction, without creating any sort of like actual value or tangible benefit for, for consumers and for, and, for, and for the public. So this is a, a massive watch out. And it leads me to our final provocation. When he clicks it, um, that brands and, and to build brands that matter, we need to work harder. Now we saw uh, the way Cabri used data, the way they use technology to support small businesses in an acute time of need. 
Tata has consistently, consistently leveraged influence to develop trust for a platform that encourages us to be awake to the society and the events that are happening around us. You can't just tell people we have a purpose. You need to land it in a tangible way. That's through insight, through understanding, through authenticity, through execution. And every now and then, I don't think it hurts to have a little bit of humor and a little bit of entertainment. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I am open to questions. Thank you, uh, thank you, Gordon. So I have a few questions here and a pretty interesting one set uh, that too. Uh, let me quickly start with the first one. So the first question uh, that we've received for you is with most brands trying to do a uh, hyper local and personalized messaging, how does a brand ensure that it's not adding to the clutter and really standing out? I, I think, you know, the, the, the key to this always starts with like um, your understanding of, of trends of society, of the insights that will make you stand out. And I think, you know, that, that has to be our start point on everything. You know, there are, multiple you know challenges you know every day in everybody's lives you know that, that that affects how they behave how they purchase even you know so understanding what your brand and you know what your brand or even what your category can actually bring like you know and and what the connection is to that like to what it brings to to individuals and, and to people at large that that's the key i think to stand out from the clutter because it is it is a parade at the moment of people like you know everyone has to have a purpose you know and like you know, and you know, this this is true whether you're you're an agency or or a massive multinational or like consumer brand. You know, is like, to, to me, it becomes just noise. If everybody paints their logo, you know, multicolored in in response to to Pride, like you know, Pride Month, you know, what's the differentiation there? What is that? What are you actually building? Let's not say you don't do it, but bring something to that which is like tangible, which is around your brands, and show that you're actually doing something that is that is connected to this. It's not just a washing of like, you know, of a brand every month for the, whatever the next cause is. Right. Thank you for that, Gordon. Uh, another question that I've just received now is uh, malls have the focused and receptive customer set along with their family friends, but still mall branding and promotions feature at the bottom of brand media promotion pyramid across agencies. I mm. believe uh, Group M Wave Maker should elevate mall media in the preference list. What's your view on that? I, I think that's a, that's a good question. I think, you know, increasingly, um, you know, if, if you look at the, the drive uh, across the world to, to diversity, to inclusion, to equity in the way that we behave, that, that covers absolutely everything within, you know, um, um, within the, the business world as well. You know, so for us, I think it, there's an important step in terms of understanding, you know, um, how we direct like money, you know, I, and I think this is not just on, on, on agencies, this is on, on brands as well. I mean, you, you know how investment works, like, you know, like a lot of marketers would still believe that, you know, if you spend your money on Facebook and Google, you're not going to go far wrong, right? You know, and, and, and for us, there is an education in like, you know, how we actually spend, where do we actually spend that money to actually grow, you know, not just alternatives, which are obviously beneficial for agencies and, and, and for advertisers, but demonstrate that we are supporting other businesses, that it's not just about these huge monolithic companies. And I think this is an absolutely critical part of um, the responsibility of brands and of agencies to demonstrate that this is what we're doing. This is how you grow diversity. This is how you grow equity and this is how you grow inclusion. It's not by channeling your money into, into the same channels, uh, you know, who generally don't need our money at this moment, as you'll see from, from, <laughs> from the results they've posted over the last couple of weeks. I, I think this is something that we are you know, genuinely, I was looking at this the other day because I'm actually seeing this come through on, uh, on pitch requests from, uh, from clients as well. How do you actually spend your money? Where do you actually divert these funds to? How are you promoting diversity and equity? And, like, you know, and this is gonna become increasingly important. And I think for us, we've been pretty slow at tracking this, but I think you'll see that like, there's a massive step change coming which is necessarily accelerated by what's happening in the world now. Right, another one, uh, it's an interesting one. It says, as a young brand manager, what are, your what are the trends that I should anticipate to ensure a greater ROI? Ooh. Firstly, I, I forgot the second part of that question because I was just overwhelmed by a young brand manager. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I love this person, whoever this is. I love you, thank you. Um, <laughs> Look, I mean, um, the, the one thing, 
yeah, I, I, so I, I've been in China for 14 years. This has been like my, my home for 14 years. And like, you know, uh, partially um, because it, it's a good place to live, but, but mostly because if you're in the, um, in the communications industry, if you're in the in, in, interested in digital technology industry, this is like a fantastic place to be. And the one thing it teaches you is that like, you know, trends are incredibly short term. Like, you know, where we, um, you know, our ecosystem in China, and you'll see increasingly across the rest of the world, uh, it's, um, it develops at such a rate. It develops at such a rate. I think that the key to staying ahead of that is that as an agency, you know, we work very closely with brands and with platforms, and I don't just mean like, you know, the, the, the monoliths. Um, and we also work very closely with, with, with clients because we need to be agile. We need to like understand development. We need to test and learn. And, and for me, there is no like, oh, we're going to jump on this trend. We're going to throw everything at it and, it, and it's going to work. It, it doesn't work like that. The, the only things that work are, are, are testing, agility, trying to understand what works, what doesn't work. You know, and, and to me, that is, you know, that, that's the role of the agency. You know, we work with media channels every day. We see new media channels come up every day. You know, for us, you know, we have to be fully aware of like everything that's going on in this, you know, and, and try and track what these societal trends are and how communications are doing that. Now, like, you know, one of the, one of the you know, key provocations that I give, uh, I give to the people at Wavemaker is that, you know, we're at the forefront of shaping what digital technology looks like. You know? Every one of the people who works for us, they spend like, you know, their entire lives in their phones. You know, like, you know, I'm mostly I see the top of people's heads, right? You know, this is, this is how, you know, it works. And we have so many young people in our industry. They are actually creating these trends. Now, it's, it's, what's interesting to me is like, when you like have this home, it takes a little while, but when the penny drops, that like what we do in this industry is actually changing the course of communications, changing the course of like how technology is developing, how brands communicate, but how people communicate as well. That to me is like, you know, like really inspiring, really powerful, and probably what keeps me a little bit young. Right, so uh, we have a lot of questions here, but sadly we only have time for one more. Uh, so you can actually go ahead and hit Gordon up uh, on the social networks if you really want to uh, get into the other questions. Absolutely. The last question that I would like to uh, throw your way, Gordon, is uh, how can retail evolve? How do you see experiential on-ground retail panning out? I mean, th th this is really interesting. Like, you know, the one, you know, we're, uh, you know I live in, in a, uh, you know, in, in a country where it is dominated by e-commerce, but retail and physical retail has never been healthier. You know, and like, it, you know, it sounds like a, you know, a complete contradiction that like, you know, everyone shops online. But what we found is that like the retail experience is absolutely critical to everybody. And I think, you know, as we come out of pandemic, you know, that's going to become even more so. You know, you have to build an experience online. You have to build an, a real physical experience as well. If you look at the investment by brands going into um, going into physical retail, into experience centers, into like things that actually develop like omni-channel O2O experiences, this is like the future of, of, of retail. And I think, you know, the examples I'm seeing spring up a, a, across China, in Hong Kong, in Korea, you know, which, which have tended to be, I think, at the forefront of, of developing that, that, that sort of, um, you know, real, real and virtual world and integrating them, it, they're just incredible. And it, it, it won't stop, you know? And I, and I think, you know, people, you know, move away from like thinking about e-commerce and, and physical retail, because there is no distinction, you know? So it's, it will all come down to experience. It'll all come down to how you can provide that and how you can link the two. And I think that, that to me, you'll, you'll see that rapid, rapid development in, in India very, very soon. Okay. Um... How do I do this? So I have questions pouring in like hotcakes right now. I don't know what to do about them. So I will try and uh, hold you out for five more minutes if that's okay with you, Gordon. Uh, okay. Since, uh, so this, so this everybody is, is just dying to have you answer these questions. So, <laughs> okay, so the next question that I have just got is, uh, you mentioned over 80% of Indian consumers want brands to comment on what is happening around and also mm -hmm. on socio-political events. However, this may result in backlash from a certain section as we've seen. How should brands kind of walk this tight rope of balancing out, uh, conveying the message as well as uh, trying to uh, not really offend uh, the greater population out there? Yeah, I mean, so th this came from a recent Accenture study. So, you know, and, and it's, it's not really a surprise, I don't think, because, you know, this is, you can see the, the, the history of, of advertising and communication in India has always been about, 
you know, storytelling or integrating like people's stories, which are, which are exactly about society. They're about like, you know, real life environments. And that storytelling has always been, I think, a, a very distinctive feature of, of advertising and, and, and media in, in India. Now, you know, just because people want something, you know, doesn't mean you have to do it. You know, you don't have to like, you know, like just, you know, have to stand for something all the time. Sometimes you can just entertain. You know, sometimes, you know, there is room for functionality in, in, in what you do. And like, unless you actually have, you know, a reason, a, a purpose to be involved in something and you see that there is something that your, your brand, like, you know, works with and there's an insight that drives it, that's, that's, what, that's what will make it happen. And it doesn't have to be like the, the Tata T, like, you know, platform umbrella, you know, which like, which to me is just like, uh, just sensational in, in terms of, you know, the linkage of awakening, the linkage of the product, the linkage of the brand, what it stands for and like, you know, and, and its distribution across, across India, the importance of tea to people in, in terms of like how they start their day, how they awaken, and then what's happens in society around them. To me, it's that, you know, that, you know, that comes from like one single insight. But as I say, there are so many examples which are, look at something that's happening now. What is our role in this? You know, how do I actually understand what my role is? And like, you know, and, and to me, again, it comes down to understanding, comes down to insight. And it comes down to authenticity. If you don't have those things, you're never going to be able to execute well. So, you know, and to me, like, you know, a good agency will also tell you, you know what, you're, you're going down the wrong path here because uh, this, this will cause more alienation than like you actually not embarking on it in the first place. Right. Uh, another thing that uh, was really fascinating uh, and hearing you speak about this is uh, also prompt me, prompted me to ask this question. So before pandemic uh, as such happened, a lot of brand was uh, a lot of brands out there. The marketing uh, or the communication that was happening was directly uh, uh, balancing around the product or probably the need around the product. But uh, after the pandemic, we've seen uh, collectively uh, throughout the industries there is a, a, a conversation happening around empathy or emotional quotient, where brands are trying to dig deep into uh, the nature of. Uh, humanity as such and coming together so how uh, how important firstly that is in terms of building a brand uh, around the things that matter and secondly how uh, where where do you see the future of uh, this sort of communication going yeah yeah i mean I, I, as i said I, I really do think that uh, india is quite advanced in in, in its in storytelling and it's uh, in the, the uh, emotional uh, connection it builds through advertising and, and through media now um you know, it, it, again, I have a really interesting contrast uh, living, living in China uh, where, you know, advertising tends to be incredibly direct, incredibly functional and incredibly focused around performance, you know, because everyone's just looking to grow, sell, like, you know, and, and you know, you are stuck in that lower funnel all the time, just like pounding, pounding, pounding. What did you sell? Like, you know, not just like the, today, but like, you know, this minute, this second, how are we doing? So. Um, so to me, that's a, um, you know, um, it's, it's a massive contrast to where it, uh, India is. And, and there is a balance to be had. You know? And there is always a balance to be had here. You know? There is, you know, all, all of us live under excruciating pressure of delivering daily returns. You know, we have to get our viewership up. We have to get our clicks up. I have to sell more product. I have to like, you know, and, and people are looking at this daily. So you have to balance that, you know. But you know, for, for us and like, you know, a lot of the, the, the tools, the systems, the intelligence that we apply to brands is about finding that right balance. Where are you in your product cycle? Where are you in your brand life cycle? You know, what, what um, sort of like a legacy heritage do you have? How can we actually help you make the most of that now and, and for the future? And like, you know, there's no, there's no right answer. It's totally, you know, set at, at this time for this brand in this category with these consumers in this market, this is what we do. And then there are even nuances, you know, between, you know, India's a vast country, China's a vast country, like the nuances of how we communicate, you know, are always there. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm doing a really good job to say it's incredibly complicated to split 100% into two numbers, but it is, trust me. <laughs> and that's, and, but that's, that's what we do, you know, and that's, and that's uh, you know, part of the joy and, and excitement of, of, of what we do as well, that we know that we can actually influence how brands grow, how consumers feel about them, how they connect to them. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gordon. Uh, I know we've taken much more time than uh, we actually initially asked you for, but uh, thank you so much for being so patient and answering all the questions that we had for you. It was a pleasure That's to have you. Pleasure. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you so much. And I hope everyone enjoys the, uh, the rest of the afternoon.